Welcome back to CS201 Walkthroughs. My name is Lukash, and today we're going to be going through tree recursion. So I have some stuff already written out here. We're going to walk through it. I just didn't want to spend this time typing it out in front of you. Um, my goal for this is to write a function that takes the logical and of a tree. And what I mean by that is it looks through a tree, a racket tree, which we define as a list with elements that could or could not be lists. And it checks for the booleans. If all of them are true, it returns true. If any of them are false, this function returns false. If there are no booleans at all, then we're going to return no booleans. OK, that seems, seems doable. First thing I want us to think about is what are the base cases for tree recursion? So when we were doing list recursion, well, the base case was the empty list. We would cut our way through it. We would cut through, chop, 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 until the list was empty. For tree recursion, we're gonna our base cases are going to be when we reach like the bottom level of the tree. So like this innermost one, or even this empty list. It's just there's no deeper you can go. No places where you can go deeper, is I think the, a good way to think of it. Like here's the six, you can't go any deeper. You can't go any deeper into this five. And the common factor between a lot of those is, well, they're not lists. If it is a list, like here, or like here we have a list, well, then you can go another level deeper. And you can handle, well, we handle this four, but we also have to handle this list over here, which means we have to recurse again. We don't want to write a million conditions for, well, if there's a list with a list inside and another list inside, no, we just want to say, if there's a list, recurse on this list and have the function handle it. So our base cases are going to be either when it's not a list, something like this one, or when it's an empty list, like this. The other concept we have to get our heads around before we start coding is separating the car and the cutter in these cases for tree recursion. So when we see, uh, when we call our function on something like list one, two, one and two are each leaves. And this is a tree. It's a list, it has elements that are leaves, it's a tree. The way we're going to recurse through this in Racket is by calling our function again on the car and on the cutter until we reach our base cases of not a list or an empty list. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Let's say we call our function on that list, one, two. That will call it on the car, which is function one, and on the cutter, which is function list two. Function 1 will evaluate, that's a base case. Function list 2 will say, well, this is a list. It's not yet a base case. It'll call it on the car, which is 2, and the cutter, which is an empty list. These will all evaluate. One of the important features of tree recursion, or one of the important problems, I guess, is how do we mash these things together? How do we take the output of this one and the output of this one and decide what to do with them? It's a problem we will encounter writing our function. So let's get started. I'm going to use a cond here. You can copy my syntax if you need to use cons, um, but I'll, I'll write it out for you. You have a parenthesis to open the cond, and then each conditional statement has a condition, and then what to do if that condition is true. Okay, so I mean, here I'll write a simple example. Cond, um, let's see, equal. 1, 5, in that case I'll put 5, else I'll put 3, or 3. Okay, so that I'll put 3, because it checked this first condition, it said this is not true, so we're going to skip it, go on to the next one, and then it output 3. We can use else um, as the last case, and this functions as our condition. Okay, now let's start writing our conditions. Start with our base cases, they're easiest to handle. We're going to say our first was if it's not a list, so I'm going to say not list tree. You might ask me, well, when is the tree not a list? The input is always a list if it's a tree. Well, not later in the function when we recurse on elements like this. And we need our function to also handle that. So if what we're working on at this time is not a tree, well, then we also have to check if it's a boolean. Because if it's a 1, then we just kind of ignore it. 
but if it's a boolean, then we keep it, right? So I'll say if boolean tree, then return tree, else return no booleans. Okay, you might be wondering, well, we've only looked at part of the tree. Why are we returning no booleans? Well, there are no booleans in this particular part of the tree. And then if we see that later, we can, we can deal with it. It's kind of a sign telling us that, well, there are no booleans over here. That might not, that's not necessarily the output of the function as a whole if we find booleans elsewhere. Let's handle our next base case, empty tree. If it's an empty list, well, there are no booleans there. So we're going to output no booleans. There we go. Now let's handle our recursive cases. It's going to get a little tough because even though a recursive case just hand, has to handle lists, um, it has to do a few things with those. It depends on, on, on a few factors. So I'm going to make another condition within this. You might not like this, but we're going to do it. There are four cases I have to consider. The four cases I'm going to consider are um, tree and on both the car and the cutter return booleans tree and on both the car uh, on the car returns a boolean but on the cutter returns no booleans vice versa and then both return no booleans okay so remember I said up here we're gonna call our function on the car and the cutter and then here we're basically testing, well, what do we get when we call it on the car and the cutter? And that, that affects how we mash those results together. For example, if both of them are booleans, well, we have to test, are both of them true? Are both of them false? Is one is true and one a false? Because if any of them are false, right? Because if any are false, we need to output false. Right? If only one of them is a boolean, well, what do we do in that case? Well, we just return that one, right? Return the uh, return the boolean, because we can ignore the section where there are no booleans, right? If we are up here, we don't have to worry about this. We don't have to worry about this, or I guess a better example is this one. We don't have to worry about you know this empty list, this hello, this for. All we have to worry about are the booleans, so we can ignore anything that's not a boolean. If both return no booleans. Well then, together there are no booleans in either of them, there's no booleans altogether, and we just return no booleans. So let's write out those cases. Here we're going to say for our condition, and boolean tree, tree and car tree, stick with me, boolean tree and cutter tree. So here I'm asking, do both of our recursive calls return booleans? And if they do, I'm just going to return their AND to test whether both of them are true. Alright, say only, what do we say here? We said uh, on the car is a boolean. So I'll say boolean car tree this will automatically mean that the cutter tree is not a boolean because if it was, if both of them, uh, let's see now, if both the car tree, tree and on car tree, and tree and cutter tree return booleans, it'll execute this line and it won't even get here. So here by checking if the first returns, oh, fix my call. Here by checking if the first returns a boolean, I know that the second doesn't, because, or else it would have stopped here. So in that case, I'm just going to return tree and car tree, right? We know the second is no booleans, we ignore it. Here we know that since we know that not both of them, so at least one is no booleans, and uh, the first one is not a boolean, then the second one, uh, we don't know necessarily that the second one is a boolean. Um, but we can test. We can say if boolean tree and cutter tree, then return that. Return tree and cutter tree. Okay, and then the final case 
if both of them return no booleans, which should be an else, we've already tested all other possible cases, no booleans. See if we've closed our parentheses, not quite. There we go. All right, let's see if it works. Click run. Uh oh, bad syntax. It says I haven't closed my conditions. Let's look and see if I've properly parentheses everything. Check my my and because my first part of my condition is my second part of my condition. First part of my condition. Second part. First part. Second part. First part, second part, I've closed that, I close this con, close this con, close my define. Try one more time. Uh oh. Oh, I know what happens. Did any of you catch that? So I was trying to write a con. There we go. I have to write it within this condition here. So this condition here has my first case, my second case, and then my third case. My third case has to be in the same format of condition and what to do if condition is true. Here's that condition, here's what to do if that condition is true. I was leaving out the fact that we were already in a cond. Okay, there is some debugging for you on the spot. Let's run again. Now let's test. Let's see if it works and then we'll think about what's happening. True. Perfect, right? Tree and on this, we should get false. And tree on, on this tree and on this last test case gives us no booleans. Nice. So what's happening in each of these cases? So in this first case it sees this big list. It says not list tree. No, that's not true, right? It is a list, so this will return false, and it won't do this line. Empty tree, also not true, so it'll go onto this. And then it'll look through this cond. It'll end up determining that, uh, so it'll run the function on the car. This is the car of this list, and the coder. When it runs it on the car, we should get true, because there's only a true in here. When it runs on the coder, we should get true, because there's only a true there. It'll say and boolean tree and car tree. Yeah, that's a true. And boolean tree and cutter tree, another true. Then take the and of true and true and return true. In this case, it'll do something similar, except when it runs on the car, it'll get true, and it runs on the cutter, it'll get false. Of course, both of those have more recursive calls in them, which you can think about if you want, right? If we're calling the function on this part, then it'll run on the car and get true and the cutter and get false. And when it's running on the cutter, that'll have another recursive call. Right, lots of recursive calls in here. Short of it is that our function works. We can try to trace a really simple example. Let's try trace tree and it's gonna be a little bit messy. Oops. Ignore that. Run. Let's see if we can work our way through the trace. Okay. So we called tree and on this tree. It's saying, look, this is the call you made. First, we're going to call it on the car of the tree. We get no booleans. So let's walk through our code a little bit. You might be confused why it's running it twice. The reason is because it's going to ask here, boolean tree and car tree which means it'll run tree and on the car of the tree. Then it'll run uh, boo, uh, that will return false, right? Because this is no booleans. So it'll skip past this condition and move on to the next one. Boolean tree and car tree. Again, that's this call. That'll return false and it'll move on to the next one. Then it's going to ask boolean tree and cutter tree. That's this call, and it'll return false again. So then, moves on to the next one. Else, no booleans. Oh, so never mind, I, I skipped one. 
when it's calling boolean on the tree end of the code of the tree, so that's here, it sees it's a list. And it says, okay, because it's a list, we have to ask again, and boolean tree and of the car of this tree? Well, the car of this tree is two. That returns no booleans. Test it again, says no booleans. It's a little bit of a mess, but I hope that the concept at least makes some sense to you. The concept of breaking up the car, running your function on that, breaking up the cutter, running your function on that, each of which on their own might break up into more recursive calls, but all you have to worry about is how to combine them back together. So when you're writing your tree recursive functions, first think of your base cases, how to handle those, and then what all the possible ways you might want to combine your recursive cases are. Whew, that was a tough one, but we got through it. As always, if you have questions, please come into office hours, email the CS201 help email, post on Piazza. We're happy to help. Thanks for watching this video walkthrough, and I hope to see you in the next one.